Today, we're making a eucalyptus blossom traditional mead. Let's get started. All right, so what does eucalyptus honey taste like? Well, I'm sort of going off of online resources and somewhat of my opinion, I agree with what they say. Some people say that it tastes medium sweet with a rather distinguishable herbal flavor. It has a hint of menthol and caramel that some identify more as butterscotch. It can range from tart to sweet. Now the menthol is something I've heard a lot with this. Um, it does have that you know, somewhat of a minty-ish kind of taste. Now, um, how did I make this mead, or how have I started it at least? I have taken my honey and my recipe, which is on the screen right now, and I have sanitized all my stuff and started mixing things together. So simply enough, traditional meads are easy because you just need a couple ingredients. We mix together our honey, our water, into the must, as we call it. I then added my yeast and of course took us a gravity reading. The thing I did here that's lazy is I added my Fermade O all in the beginning because I have started a lot of projects all at once and I could not remember to do a staggered nutrient schedule for all of them, so I'm being lazy. And adding all of my nutrients in the, the beginning. We are now going to let this go through the primary fermentation and then we'll come back and continue the process. The fermentation took 24 days. We let it set for about two more weeks. I'm racking it over now. The current gravity is 1.000. So now we're gonna let it set for a little bit. I also decided I wanted to rack it again. So here I am racking it one more time. This is just helping to get all of the things out of it. And we're going to stabilize it. So we're stabilizing with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite, which will allow us to safely back sweeten here in a little bit. It's important to do this. If you don't want to use these things, you can pasteurize, but make sure and do this before back sweetening. All right, here we are for a three month update tasting on this thing. This is pretty dang clear, as you can see. Um, as you can see here, I racked it again a moment ago just to get off any more sediment. It is or has been stabilized. It's definitely dry, which it does have like a real, that the mintiness also has a real darkness to it, which is kind of interesting. It has like a bright note, but then sandwiched way underneath, it's also like a dark note. So it's kind of funky. It needs some sweetness. And um, that's why I stabilized it. I'm kind of prepared for that. I'm going to add some more honey. So I've already pulled a portion of it out into this. We're going to take and add, I think half a pound or eight ounces of honey to this to back sweeten. So let me do that real fast. So part of the reason that I use this mason jar is to oxygenate less. Um, it's a little bit tough to add honey and back sweeten without oxygenating. So this is honestly oxygenating ugh, this a little bit, can't talk. But now I'm trying to pipette it back in with adding as little oxygen as possible. So I could theoretically get my auto siphon out, but this is kind of like a borderline auto siphon. Okay, so current gravity, or final gravity, I guess, assuming it doesn't move, which it shouldn't, is 1.012. Let's taste it. Oh, it definitely brought a lot of that floral value back, a lot of the original honey taste. Obviously, back sweetening with the original honey will help. Clarity has been affected. It's a little flabby. And what I mean by flabby is it doesn't have any kick from like an acid punch. And it does not have any tannin. It's pretty washy. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my little sample here. I'm gonna split it into three batches. And we're going to do some acid trials, which sounds real hardcore, but that essentially means that we're gonna take the three main brewing acids, Citric, Malic, Tartaric. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit into each one of these. And then we're gonna taste test back and forth and then I'll decide which one I wanna add. Yeah, Mr. White. Yes, yeah, science. <coughs> All right, this is an easy choice. I'm gonna go backwards. Tartaric is a no. Tartaric is grape acid, adds a lot of warm, not warm, <laughs> dark acidity, I would say, does not match what we need here. It doesn't. It doesn't help the flab. 
Um, Malik also is in between. It adds a little darkness, a little brightness, but not enough to make it pop. The Citric adds a lot of pop. Yeah, it adds a lot of zing to this thing. Makes it a little more appealing. So I think paired with the sweetness, a little bit of citric acid, which we're about to um, add a tiny amount to this, and some oaking, we're gonna have a pretty dang good brew. So here's what I'm gonna do. I got tons of stuff on here right now. I've got French oak chips, American oak, chi oak chips, whiskey barrel chips, which could be interesting in this, mocha oak chips, I've got some um, French oak cubes. Ah, what do I want to use? This has already got a lot of darkness, so I want a light toast. I'm going to add French oak. This is a medium toast. And I'm going to go ahead and put some water and get him, get him going. All right, so we've added one half ounce of French toast oak chips a sixteenth of a teaspoon of the citric acid to, to help the brightness, half a pound of eucalyptus honey back to it. I chose the chips because I want a light toast or medium toast, but also chips will move faster and oak faster, so this will probably be finished oaking in, I'll give it uh, two weeks. But I'm going to taste test every day, thank the Lord, and we'll come back when we're ready to move on. It's not very clear anymore. That's okay. Um, we'll see if it clears up any. If not, I don't know if I'll fight the battle on clarity for this one. All right, here we are for the finale. So this uh, mead has gone through some changes. What's important to note here is that I am working to adjust and blend the acidity to sweetness to tannin, which is why I've added so many different things to this, like the oak, like the citric acid. Um, it's been a few weeks. You can see they're in bottles. I, I meant to uh, video myself recording, or excuse me, video myself bottling it, but you know like the, um, the dad move where you like hit the record button and you actually don't record the thing you wanted to, well, that's what happened. So um, I forgot to record the bottling. Essentially, I used a bottling wand and put them all in bottles. In grand total, I'll show you a picture of what I have. I got a total of six beer bottles, one 375 milliliter, and um, a wine bottle, or a 750 milliliter. Not up here right now, but that's fine. So I, uh, I bottled straight off of the oak, what it was being oaked. Essentially, I was just really careful to not get the bottom, the lees. And of course, I um, I figured out how long I wanted to let it oak or be oaked by taste testing. So we only oaked it for, I think it was about seven or eight days. Chips move quickly. Let's go ahead and open one of these up and get a pour of it. As you can see, it looks pretty dang good. It is actually pretty clear for having added some um, honey to it, which naturally changes the clarity. The tannin, of course, might have added some or attributed some to the clarity, but probably not. It is a little darker color, I will say, maybe just a smidge darker. Of course, oak can change the coloring of things too. Ooh, yeah, the nose is so... I mean, it is, it's like you're sticking your nose right into a, a, um, a barrel. It's got that full woody kind of toasty char, but it has this um, nice, uh, not bright floral. I would say it's like a medium bright floral note coming through with some sweetness, of course. I, I will say this, uh, this is, I've, I just logged mead number 239 my progression of mead making has gotten so much better and it, it, the graph of how much better it got um, whenever I figured out how to balance acidity and tannin and sweetness, it went up really fast. Like I was kind of going like this for a while, but then when I learned how to adjust those things, it was, it flew. So let's go ahead and taste this. Oh yeah, it's like kind of buttery now. The oak really adds some, um, buttery side of course the sweetness is nice to give it a more of a mouth coating feel but so does the tannin yeah it's very thick thick body 
the uh, honey character is well retained. Of course, back sweetening with the same honey will yield more of that honey character, unsurprisingly. The acidity level is not super sharp, which I think is nice. It's just got enough zing to kind of make it feel a little more refreshing, but also to add just that, that third little layer of balance between your tannin and your sweetness. That acidity kind of encompasses everything. Uh, the wood really does feel like a kind of a blanket that kind of warms up this brew quite a bit. It definitely has an herbally kind of feel to it. And there's no tea in this thing at all, but that honey I think does have some herby side to it. It's really good. I'm a huge fan of this and I've already put some bottles back to save. I have some bottles that I'm gonna share with friends, but this thing is gonna age wonderfully. Um, I will show you the, the timeline of things. You know, we're, uh, let's see, we're about three and a half months old at this point. So I bet by the time we get to six months, year, it's gonna be even better. This was a pretty quick brew. Uh, three months is, I mean, a long time, but in the mead world, it's really not that much time. So I'm a huge fan of this honey and I'm actually out of the honey at this point, so I need to go and buy some more, but I'd love to because I wanna play and experiment with more combinations. Traditionals are great, and I will highly recommend that you work on getting a traditional mead down in some capacity, working on getting it to where it is up there and your really good things you brew. Then, of course, try to make some other things. Um, one kind of truth of mead making is we like to make a lot of um, fruited meads because honestly, they're a little bit easier to hide behind. And that's, that's nothing against them. I make a lot of fruited meads because people like them more, but also they're not as hard to quote master. This traditional is gonna be, or traditionals in general are harder to master because you are really dependent on uh, a good process, a nice yeast, which I love the yeast uh, choice here. The 71B just kind of overall encompassingly um, does well with a lot of <laughs> different mead combinations. So that's a good yeast for this. You could use comparable ones, but I liked this choice here. I'm impressed. I recommend you go and try to make one, uh, make a traditional mead with whatever honey you can get a hold of. I have another recipe that might not, might or might not be on the channel of uh, using eucalyptus blossom honey. It is uh, a eucalyptus braggot, which is a beer and mead combination. You can find that video on the channel now or if it's not out in the future, but I have enjoyed this. Please hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribing just says, hey, I wanna see your content more. YouTube has this weird thing where it doesn't always push the content that you, uh, even if you hit subscribe. So there is an extra step if you'd like, there's a bell you can hit that notifies you whenever I actually upload, it kind of pushes it to your subscription box. And I appreciate that. Your views make a difference. You are helping the mead community grow and my mead community grow whenever you support the channel. So thank you. I appreciate your time. I hope you have enjoyed this and I will see you in the future with another mead and another video. Cheers. Thank you.